Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 11. In this tutorial we're going to have a quick debug session, so we're going to fix a couple of bugs that have arisen up until this point. We're going to create a fade out screen and we're also going to bring some more into our environment in the way of a house, which will kind of make the scene look a little bit better along with more shrubbery. So the first issue I want to address, or the first bug, is based around this axe and we created this fake axe after we'd set our layer in our original axe and what this means that is if I take my first person controller and I'm just going to place it behind that wall for now just to make things quicker and easier so if I bring my character over here and press play all appears good and well until we turn this way and we can actually see that fake axe just kind of looks like it's floating the reason this has happened is because we've set this fake axe after we've set the layer, like I said, and we now need to set that fake axe in the tree. We need to set the layer back to default and then yes, change children. So what this means now is that its layer is reset to how it should be and then that bug no longer occurs. The second bug that we have is this. We can hear our axe swinging. We can press the mouse button and it swings our axe even though we don't have it in our hand. So we need to modify our weapon control script. So click on weapon control here, double click here into axe swing and basically it's just a case of being able to recognize that we have hold of this axe and we can do that by modifying these two scripts, the actual weapon script and then the weapon pickup script. So we need the weapon pickup script to tell our weapon control basically either that we can have an extra variable in here to say yes you can now swing the axe or that script could for example activate the weapon control. Now I think the best way that we can do this is to basically have another variable public bool in fact this should be static because we are going to reference it from a different script bool and we'll have holding axe semicolon uh, by default we'll, we'll actually make that false so what we need to do here is add an extra if statement before the input dot get button down so if holding oops helps if I put the bracket holding axe equals true I should be double equals then do the following and basically that if statement so after this if statement here after we start the coroutine and close curly bracket we just put another close curly bracket to close that if statement up and save that script so now if we head back to unity and press play we should be able to see that we can no longer swing our axe, even though that weapon control is active. That now means that our axe object here, take axe object, we need to go into this script, axe take, and then activate that variable from this script. So once it loads up, it's thinking about it. There we go. So once we take it, in this case right here, so after, let's see, where should we have it? So action, distance, we take it. So after we set the fake axe as inactive right there, we can go axe swing dot holding axe equals true, semicolon, and save. And this now should resolve that second bug that we had. So let's press play and take a look. So, pressing the mouse button, we get nothing. So, let's pick up this axe. And there we go. Sorted. So, they're the two bugs that, or rather, the two biggest and most obvious bugs that I've found so far, which are kind of holding us back a little, but they are now resolved. So, if you remember at the end of last tutorial, we created a fade in screen. And I asked if, you know, you wanted to have a go at a fade out screen. And if not, I would create it in this tutorial anyway. So let's quickly create that fade out screen using the same principle. 
We're not specifically going to use it in this tutorial, but it's always nice to have a fade in and fade out. So to do that, what we can do is the same principle. So game object, UI, raw image, F2 to rename, fade out. And let's set the color as completely black and stretch zero out all of our parameters right here. Double click, there we go. Next thing, we need to create the animation for it. So firstly, let's set the color as zero. Excellent. And next, animation, create, and we'll call it fade out anim and save. So I'm going to do this over the course of one whole second. So it's going to be 60 frames a second. So let's press the record button. Set our keyframe. So make sure we select the color. And we're going to do the alpha, only the alpha. So originally it was 255. We just need to remember that we need to modify this box and then set it back to zero to set that keyframe. So by the 60th frame. Yep, you guessed it. 255 on the alpha. And then stop the recording, go to project, select the animation, change to debug up here, legacy, head back to normal, and once. So that now means our fade out, we can remove the animator, add component, animation, and drag and drop, fade out anim, straight onto there. So to show this in action, I'm actually going to disable fade in. And basically, as soon as we start the game now, we should fade out to black. So let's check that out. There we go. And there's our fade out screen. So we can disable the fade out screen right now and re-enable the fade in. So this fade out will come it'll be very useful for us later on in the series, but it's there ready for us. So I'm going to save my scene. So next thing, let's actually make our environment look a little better. So let's zoom in to our axe so we get you know, more focus on the scene we're on. And let's take a look at this grass first and foremost. So I'm going to go into my textures folder and drag and drop this shrub straight into Unity. And you can get this on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets. And I guess really this should probably be in terrain assets, shouldn't it, rather than textures. So let's just drag and drop here. So the shrub is going to work the same way as what we've done with the grass. Select our terrain. We're going to need this one here, paint details. So edit, add grass texture. Even though it's not technically grass, we still click add grass texture. Drag and drop the shrub. Uh, max size, we'll leave as default. Click add, select our shrub, select brush size, decrease a little bit, and there we go. You can see how that's now having an effect. Um, you know, adding a little bit something to the scene. So let's press play and take a quick look. Okay, so we actually have something somewhat decent now. So it's looking a bit more greenery about it. So the other thing I was going to bring in was the um, bush that I have. So let's drag and drop this bush into Unity again. And this works in the same way as a tree. So even though it's not a tree, it's a bush, it still works in the same way. So on the terrain, we click Edit, Add. Let's go into Bush, drag and drop, click Add. And now, much in the same way as we've done the tree, we can select, change the brush size, density, height, and there we go. We've got some bushes. So I'm going to place these bushes over here, but I'm going to have them quite dense. So brush size is going to be quite small, but I'm going to have it very densely populated around here and maybe the other side as well about here whoops that goes a little bit far up there let's have about there and let's press play and take a quick look at this now lovely okay so last thing we're going to do is let's bring in some kind of house and we're going to experiment with this house a little bit now because there's different ways of how we can make this house look change the effect and design of our game so we've already exp uh, explored the asset store a little bit so let's go to this asset store and i'm going to look for something called old house 
And as always, with everything on this channel, it's always free. So let's click free only. And I've gone for this one right here. Now, you know, I have to put it out there. I have chosen this on my own. I've not been in contact with the developer of this. I've been paid nothing to actually display this right here. This is just something which I feel fits with this tutorial. Well, quite well, at least. So we're going to use this. If you want to use this, that's fine. Click import or download. If you want to use something else, that's completely up to you. So let's explore how we can use this asset. Now, I've already gone ahead and imported it to save time. And we just need to drag and drop this object right here. So let's place it by the water just here. And I'm going to increase the scale to two by two by two. Now, if we look at it, it looks okay. It looks relatively decent. But depending on our lighting situation and depending on how the normal maps are displayed, this can have a completely different effect depending on what type of game you want to go for. So let's align it with the floor about there. And let's explore how we can modify the actual assets of this asset. So if we take this uh, normal map right here and tick create from grayscale and click on apply, we'll see a subtle difference occur. Or we should do at least. Maybe it's because of our lighting. So let's change our lighting. Directional light, let's rotate. And on the Y, is it going to make much of a difference? Let's in cha change the intensity. It's not coming out quite right. So, well, that's kind of cool. Look what it's done there. So essentially, what's happening here, there we go. The light has a massively different effect on it, depending on what side it is on. So we can see here how it is varied because of the normal map. If we go back to our normal map and click take a uh, gray uh, grayscale again can't get my words out and tick apply or click apply you'll see the change occur right now so it looks smoother and a little bit kind of plasticine -y. so let's make this look a little better let's tick create from grayscale and click apply now let's click on the house itself and down here cube is the main focus of the house and down here we'll have the material and we can click the little arrow if it's not already there. And let's change the source to albedo alpha. And now you can see it's given a bit more of a gritty feel to it. We could change the normal map to one and you'd see just how kind of odd it makes it look. Getting the normal map just right can sometimes be the way and key to success. So let's change this normal map to point two. And you can see it's starting to look fairly decent now. Now let's change the metallic a little bit more, maybe about halfway. But let's also decrease the smoothness to about there. Now we could change the occlusion, but all you're going to do is make it look more plasticky. So you need to have this at least fairly high because by default the occlusion is on there. But we could theoretically remove it, but again it becomes plasticky. So let's reattach, if I can find it again, I've lost it, there it is. So here we can actually see how this is now starting to look. It all comes down to how you define the assets themselves. So if we change this back to not creating from a grayscale and press apply, we can see how this now reacts. It looks a little less plasticky, but it looks a little bit shiny as though it's a bit wet. So if we go back onto cube, and change the albedo color, we could always make it a little bit darker if we wanted to. So you can see how that wood effect now gives it a much better look and feel. And this is how we can refine graphics in Unity. You need to make your whole world relative to how this is looking. So let's take our directional light. In fact, firstly, let's go to lighting settings and let's change our skybox to default skybox. And you can see yet again how this is looking. So if we close all of this and now go to the directional light again, sorry. And if we change the rotation on the X to about there, you can see the light makes all the difference. So if we have just a little bit of light, we can see how that reacts 
to what we have here. If we change the Y and Z, it's not going to make too much of a difference. However, it is all about how you display the objects and the textures, as I said. So let's rotate this by 90 degrees to have it facing this way. Let's move it along here. And now, after we've explored all these options, let's now make this whole scene relative and look like all belongs together. So if we take these trees here, the tree assets, if I can remember where the tree assets are right there. Now we could theoretically modify how this tree looks. But again, it's something that you, you can mess around with, you can play around with, but I guess it's not massively important. These things don't matter too much because what it comes down to is how it's all displayed, for example, with your normal maps. So if we go to our trees here, tree, edit tree, right here, it's not going to matter too much at all because realistically there are other trees that we can bring in and we're probably going to bring in more trees because I don't quite feel these are relative to how we want our game world to be looking. So are we happy with this house? I'm not entirely convinced by how it looks at the moment but at the end of the day it's your game, it's how you want it to be. So I'm just going to come off this get off the terrain, select my house, select the albedo, let's have it a little bit lighter about there and change the normal map. You could also invert it and it looks real grotty I guess. Normal maps don't necessarily always have to be positive, they can be negative. So if I have 0 0.8, I think I'm quite happy with how that looks. But what I think we might do is kind of have a lamp at the front of it to see how that can have an effect. For a quick example, which we are going to go into, I'm going to right click, I'm going to have light and point light, and I'm going to bring this point light out here, and you can see how that has an effect on this actual object. So if we had that, for example, as yellow, you can see just how much it does affect it. it makes it kind of have a wet and glossy look, but refining it to make it look quite nice. Now, I feel like I've gone on a little bit here, but it's all about the game design that you want to aim for. All about playing around with the assets you want and how you want to display. So I'm going to press play now. And finally, I'm going to investigate this house as it is. OK, so that looks pretty nifty. Quite happy with that. So next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is we're going to go inside this house. And as it stands, if we go over to the house, all the way through these bushes that we created, yep, we can just go inside. And this is what it looks like from the inside. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to create a new scene because I'd like this to be a different scene inside, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. We could cheat a little bit and rather than have a new scene, we could actually have the inside of this house below it, out of bounds, as it were. So that's something that we can explore. So I'm going to get rid of the point light for now because it's something we will do later on. So guys, you basically find what you need to find within the asset store. You find nice assets. You find what you need and what will work with your game. And I think what I'll quickly do is add a skybox back on rather than have default because I'm not a massive fan of the default skybox. Um, let me see if I can remember where the skybox were. I cannot remember. Urban light. Okay, I'm going to go for that one for now just to see the kind of effect it will have. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.